evening, guys. Let's see if anybody's on here yet. All right, welcome. Glad you're here to learn some more Tony Rice. This is our third one in this series. I told y'all I'd do eight. And um, we've done, this is the seventh one I've done of these. So seven Tony Rice solos um, under our belts tonight. Um, so it's spring here in Nashville. It's cooler. Of course, we've got some sad news, um, a tragedy on Monday um, at the Covenant School. And it's been a rough week. And I'm really glad that, um, that we've had music to turn to and love and reaching out in the community. Um, but it's just so sad and I felt like I just had to say something because I think it's hanging over all of our heads right now, all across the nation. But, um, so welcome tonight. We are going to move into C position. I'm not sure we've done one in C position yet, but we've got our capo on two. And from the Blake and Rice album, um, Tony played an awesome solo um, about a few minutes into the song, um, and he, um, takes us up into this third position that I love talking about at workshops and stuff, because we slide up there from the first position, and it's so nice and easy, and it's super fun, um, so let's just get to it. I hope you have your guitar, um, and it looks like some more people are joining up, so I'll play it again for y'all. Play this nice solo here. here. I'll say the numbers first and then I'll, uh, I'll say the letters of the chords. C chord. I thought I'd say the numbers first. So let's do that again. Here we go. One chord. Stay on the one. workshop primarily about this Tony Rice solo so we won't go too much into um, the melody or the kickoff or any of the other cool stuff that's happening in this amazing track uh, with Tony Rice and Norman Blake um, as usual I just um, I'm staying on down up down up down up it's uh, one and two and three and four and and that's important to keep our right hand metronome going if you've never flat picked before a lot of people are interested in flat picking technique so if we skip a note, the hand kind of keeps moving. See, it looks like I'm playing non-stop, doesn't it, like this. I used to have a bass player that would get so confused because standing behind me, he was like, I could never tell what was going on because you were always moving. And that's just kind of the metronome of the flat picking right hand. Um, so secondly, we do have the capo on two, and I'll talk about fretted notes. I will call this C, even though it's obviously D, uh, but we have a capo on, and it's just a little bit confusing if you're following along with mandolin or fiddle. Very sorry about that, but your ear will pick up what to do. All right, so let's get started with the pickup phrase. Um, as usual, Tony's going to have a nice drawn out pickup phrase. And I, I think it starts on the end of one. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Yeah, so you can go ahead and on that one, do a downbeat on the C here. So that's how he's going to start. So let's do that together. Downstroke on the C, first fret, second string, and then straight on up to that open G. And then up on the C, second string, first fret, 
and then down on the G again, hammer on that A, and that's the second fret, third string, down on the C again, and then up on the G. So that's a lot to say. It's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and down, up, rest. Remember when we don't play a beat or a half a beat, the hand is still going to move. That's part of flat picking. Down, up, goes down, down, up, goes down, up, down, up, down, up. So that's a typical bluegrass kickoff. Okay, let's loop that together. Two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and one, and two, and three, and four, and slower. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, um, the downbeat of the one chord of the solo is going to slide up from our third finger, third fret, second string, our D note, slide on up to the fifth uh, fret on the second string. So that's going to do a downstroke, and then we're going to do a down on our third fret, first string, our G. So where are we now? Down, down, that was one and, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three so we had a half note there one and two and three and okay the half note being this e here i'm calling it an e right it's not really an e but it's fretted e with a capo we are now in this position that i've been dying to talk to y'all about and we've talked about last week when it was the four chord in, in the key G. Now we're in C position. So everybody probably plays an open C scale. But where do we go when we want to go up? We go up to here. And everybody does it. It is a super popular, popular, popular position here because it's nice and easy, lays out easy on the brain and easy on the fingers. We've got our root position C triad. We have our third finger, third string, fifth fret on the root of the C chord. So grab that for me. Try to absorb this with all your heart. Here's our one, our C. There it is, C. Pinky underneath, second string, fifth fret. Here's our third. C, E. Next up, first string, third fret. First finger on G. That's our five of the C chord. One, three, five, three, one. Okay, so this position here, this triad position, is where all the fancy C tricks happen. Sorry, all is it? little bit of a hyperbole. A lot of the C action happens and we need to absorb that shape because even when we're not playing that shape, that shape is in our minds and brains and hearts because we know that's where the one three five is. So we're sliding on up to the third to the five. Once you get to that five you know there's a five six five, right? Oh my goodness, Alan, I've been wondering where you are. You know, I remember you from 2020 when I did the uh, the other solos, so I, I'm so happy to see you. I wonder what time it is over there in Australia. But thanks for joining. Um, Shelton, oh, thank you, Shelton. <laughs> um, back to the C position, we're going to slide. Three. So just giving you context. Okay, do you hear there's 
really just playing around in this shape. Once you internalize this shape, you can kind of do anything and it's going to sound good. Five, six, five, three, five, three, flat three to two. Let's slow that down for y'all. G, A, G, third fret, up stroke on the fifth fret, down stroke on the third fret, up stroke on the fifth fret, second string. Now we have our flat three pull off. Okay, down on the flat third, one half, half step down from that third on the fourth fret, second string. Two to two, and you know how much I love speaking about this flat three to two. There's that sound. Right? Okay, let's get this in our brains and in our hearts because this flat three to two sound to one is in every solo we've learned so far. So imagine if you're, you weren't having to learn this from tab, you weren't having to learn it from uh, muscle memory, you weren't having to learn it from any sort of intellectual source, no teacher, your ear says, huh, I hear flat three to two. And you know where it is, because you've studied these sounds and these scale degrees and you know that where that is. In the key of C, it's E flat to D to C, flat three, to two to one. So you see how much ear training pays off, more so than staring at a piece of paper. Piece of paper, we're disconnected. We're, it's as if there's a third party that has the information. The information is in our heart, in our brain, in our ear, in our soul. And we just invite ourselves to absorb the sounds. Okay? That way, when you're in a jam and somebody plays something cool, you hear it, you absorb those scale degrees, you know, you know what degrees those were because you've been working more on ear training than on learning a muscle memory solo from a piece of paper. So sorry to sound preachy, but I've just seen it with so many students. They, they work so hard and they believe that if they use enough mus you know, force and enough intellect that they will nail music. And it's kind of, it's so much quicker and easier and more fun right if we're hearing it and doing it the way through our ear so five six five three five three flat three to two one two one okay so that's a quick 16th note pull off down stroke from the flat three to two uh fourth fret to third fret second string down up on the fifth fret third string and then down on the d the second uh, string, third fret, and then up on the C again, fifth fret, third string. Okay? Okay, so now we're going to go to one of my favorite things about um, showing people what to do when they're here. They don't know how to get back down. They've just done cool licks up here all day. That's one way, okay, but when you don't feel like doing that little trick, that was using the floaty E to get down. Okay, this way is, we need to get to the six. We have to reach with our first finger down here to the second fret, third string. And that's where Tony went. Okay, that's how he got down from this position wanted to get down to the first position to those open notes. So I just showed you guys that lick. Next lick is da da da. Okay, so we were here. We're gonna reach, like I said, with our first finger down to the A, the sixth of the scale degree, and then we're gonna do a down on the A, which is the third fret, excuse me, third string, first fret, and we're going to go down, up, down, A, G, G, okay, okay, now with
with an upstroke, we're going to reach for that flat three that happens every time Tony plays a C chord pretty much. Here's our third. One, three, five, three, one. One half step down from the major third is the flat third. There it is. Okay, so here we are in context. Six, five, five, and then upstroke on that flat three. First fret, fourth string. Pull off. Okay, remember when we pull off, we do a ghost stroke, downstroke with our right hand. So up, ghost, up on the C. And then a down, down on the open D. And then an up on the B, second fret, fifth string. Down on the root, the tonic C. And then he does an up, an octave higher that high uh, C there on the first fret, second string. So let's look at that whole lick. Fun, right? Sounds so good. Let's just say that he leads us down the whole terrain here. He leads us from here down to here. Oh, and then back up to here. It's fun. Start from the top. You guys do those pickup notes with me and then that one long C lick, that one lick. Two, three, four, one. Cool? Questions? Now, all of that's over the C chord. We're gonna go, we're gonna lead, he's gonna do another C run and lead us to the five chord in a super fun and awesome creative way. So I love it. So another little pickup for his next phrase. I love it when it does that. So down we go. So down on the open G, hammer on to the A, second. Uh, fret third string and then down on the C first uh, fret second string up on the G down again on the C down hammer down up on the G down down goes down sorry down hammer down up do a quick slide here again. Third fret, uh, second string, the D with our third finger. So that same movement. Down goes down, up, down, down, down. Okay, so that one's a quarter note instead of a half note this time. Remember last time we went one, two, three. We're going to go And then, okay. There it is. Okay, so this I will fully admit for probably a student asked me to learn this, so we worked on it together. And I kind of thought that stuff in the middle was a mistake. <laughs> I didn't, it wasn't anything I recognized. I think it just kind of went by my ear so quickly. So later, another student asked to learn this and I slowed it down. By then I had some slowdown software, which I'd never had before. I used to just sit there and rewind things at full speed and listen to them over and over and over and over and over. And, um, and I figured out what this is and I got so excited. Um, because it's, um, um, so it's basically getting ready for that five chord 
um, by going down to this D here. So he's kind of going into the sound of this minor pentatonic, um, right, to get us ready to go to the five chord. Um, when I figured that out, I just about went nuts. So I'll, I'm going to play it for, with y'all um, nice and slow with him to show you. So you almost have to bar your first finger there on the third fret. So you go down and then you do an up on that third fret second string and hammer on with your second finger onto the fourth fret and quickly pull off. Okay, then an upstroke on that fifth fret third string and the, that, the C, dip back down on the D with the downstroke and then up on the uh, C, the third uh, string, fifth fret. And then now we have this, right? What would be a B flat, a fretted B flat? Okay, so what is so cool about that is now he's going to go into one of his typical G licks. And uncharacteristically hits the six instead of the dominant seven. So why do I love that so much? Um, okay, check out this sound here. One could interpret this sound here, this um, as a one chord sound, this flat three to two sound. Right, that we were talking about earlier, E flat to D to C. Okay. So that is technically still one, right? But then he shifts with that flat, um, it would be a flat seven of the one chord, right? But really, I believe in his brain, he's going into that surrounding the third of the five. So remember we talked about this before. Here's our five chord. One, three, five, three, one. It's a triad. One is our fifth fret, fourth string. Three is our fourth fret, uh, third string. Five is our third fret, second string. So here's our third. One, three, five, three, one. Half step down is our flat three. So, goes to the flat three, one, four, one, flat three, three, one, six, one, five, and then that little shell of the one, excuse me, of the five. We did that last week in the uh, Teardrops in My Eyes solo. Okay, so let's just walk through that again. This is tiny bit this is probably the most difficult part of the whole solo and it's not even that difficult but it did trick me for a while so I just want to make sure we're getting through because I, I do want to explain how what a genius move I think this is because I just he doesn't play this all the time and it tricked me for a minute I don't know why like now that I hear it I just it's obvious to me, but so okay, play that high G here, the third fret, uh, first string, and then we, we're going to kind of bar it almost with our um, first finger to get that D, and we're going to hammer on and pull off. Second finger hammers on and pulls off the fourth fret, upstroke on the fifth, fr fifth fret. Um, third string and then down on the D again 
up on the C, fifth fret, third string, down on that flat seven of the C, which is the third fret, uh, third string, the first finger, and then up on the fifth fret, fourth string, which is the fret of G, then a quick little bar with the downstroke to get that C, right? And then up on the root here, this uh, of the chord, this G, fifth fret, fourth string. Now we have this down downstroke and a hammer from flat three to three, B flat to B natural, third fret to fourth fret on third string. So hammer on or slide, and then down on the open G, and then an up on that E on the second uh, fret, fourth string and then down on that open G, up on the open D, and now we'll slide again from the flat three to three, B flat to B natural, a third fret, third string, to fourth fret, third string. Remember, as we slide, we'll do a ghost stroke with our right hand to keep our internal metronome going. Down, ghost up, and then down on that high G there. What is that little movement? talked about last week is the shell of that five chord, that G. Flat three to three, one. If one were to play that triad, you'd see it. Three, five, one, five, three. It looks like the bottom of our bar chord if we were to do that. Okay? So if you've never done one of my workshops before, I'm constantly talking about the triads. Everything's based around it's so much quicker to learn um, solos when you're kind of when you're seeing the shapes and the the, the uh, chord tones that way, and you can see how they're being surrounded and you're seeing how they're being decorated. One of um, one of my students at Kaufman Camp put it a really great way once. He said, "So you mean the triad is kind of like a Christmas tree, and then the lick is the decorations on the plain tree?" And I said, "Yeah, well, that's a great way to put it." Because we've got, when we see this triad, we see the, and then we know we can do five, six, five, just because I happen to know my five is there. And then there's flat three to two to one, or flat three to three, five, six, five, flat three to two, one. Anyway, okay, so now we are halfway through this solo. This is how much we've done. And then next up, um, okay, that's nice and simple and pretty much echoes our very first lick. Um, so um, let's check it out with Tony just to make sure I'm not going crazy. There it is. So again, same as our first one, we've got um, G, A, G, first fret, third, uh, first string, third fret, and then with a downstroke up on that A, fifth fret, uh, first string, and then down on the G again, the first string, third fret. Sorry, it gets a lot, he does a lot of kind of noodling on this one. When I go slow, I lose it in my head. So let's just do that much there. Um, G, A, G, E, G, E, pull off from the flat three to two. Fret second string, second str uh, string fifth fret. Down on the first string third fret G. Back to the D E. 
fifth uh, fret, second string, and then a down on the E flat, the fourth fret, second string, with a quick little pull off again from that flat three to two. So just with a down stroke, fourth fret, second string to third fret. And then an up on that C. Yeah, there's just a little extra D C there. Okay. So do it really slow. Okay. And then we have um, reaching back down with our six to get back back down to that first position. So first finger on the uh, second fret, third string. So down, up, down, down on the A, up on the G, down on the G. And then same deal as we did before, we do an upstroke on that flat three to two. First fret, fourth string, up. Do a ghost down as we pull off to our open D. Upstroke on the C. The, uh, obviously the third fret, uh, fifth string. So that's that whole lick. I'll do it in slow-mo. See me okay? Okay. Next, he's going to walk us up to the uh, four chord. So that lead that was the that was the four chord. Ba -da 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 -da. So all of that is going to be four chord. We're going to walk on up to the root of the four chord. What is the four chord? It's F. So we're going to do an open D, down, up on the E, and then we're going to hit that um, third fret, fourth string. So down on the D, up on the E, down on the root there, the um, F natural, the third uh, fret, fourth string, back to the E, back to the F, down, up, down, up, down, up on the G, down on the A, so he like almost starts a pattern there, doesn't he? He almost starts what you think is going to be, but he switches it up which I love. I love so much about Tony Rice. Always switching everything up and can't really expect anything. So, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Right when you thought he was going to do that pattern, he keeps going up. Down, up, F, E, F, G, A, F, G, a, B, C. Okay. So the next little bit is really fun. Okay. So from, I'll just start from the top of this lake here. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's where we stopped. We have B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F. Down, up, 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 down, up. Okay, so 
So for those who um, don't know note names, uh, I will guide you through. Sorry, I always do this. I like to be inclusive for those who haven't learned their note names. And I do know there are some of you out there, which your homework is to go learn your note names. It'll make life a little easier. Um, down on the open D, up on the second fret, uh, fourth string, down on the third fret, uh, fourth string, and then up on the second fret, fourth string, down on the third fret, fourth string, up on the open G, down on the second fret, third string, up on the third fret, um, fourth string, down on the open G, down on the A, the, excuse me, the second fret, third string. So that was up on the second fret, third string, down on the open B, second string, up on the second string, first fret, and then down on the second fret, uh, third string, up on the open B, second string, down. Up on the open B, down on the first fret, second string, down on the third fret, oh, excuse me, up on the third fret, second string, down on the open E, first string, and then up on the first fret, first string. Oh, that just about killed me. And it probably just about killed you too. <laughs> Maybe. Let's take a vote. Does anyone actually need me to do that? Because it's kind of painstaking. <laughs> It'll probably help me stave off Alzheimer's if I do that every day because it causes me to think way too hard. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that to imply that people who get Alzheimer's aren't thinking. Sorry. I, I didn't mean that at all. Sorry. But <laughs> foot in mouth. Um, Next is a super fun coming down from the four. And that's the end of the solo. So, um, you guys ready for this? This is what, this is kind of what attracted me to the solo in the first place. Because it's kind of like this cool, I call it the waterfall lick. The, skips the F. But um, when I have my students practice patterns, um, we do things like that. And that one happens to be four in a row in the scale. So just to like, sorry, this is kind of an aside because we're getting through this solo a lot more quickly than usual. And I'll just get warm in here. Getting way too excited about Tony Rice. So this is an example of what, what I just mentioned, um, a scale exercise in the key of C, which you could do to warm up for this solo, for example, um, just four in a row. Does that make sense? So you're going four up the scale start on the second degree and go four up that. I'll start on the third scale degree, go four up that. Start, etc. Right? Then going down. So we have tons of little exercises like that and my students get super excited when we hear um, some of those little patterns in people's solos. Because it's like, oh yeah, I can do that. My fingers do that. And I hear that. So, and that's another thing, like we were talking about earlier, um, learning by ear, you hear these things and you can just do them. So he goes, so he starts on the E and goes four down the scale. E, D, C, B. And then he does it from the next degree down, the two, the D. So 
right when we think he's going to just keep doing that down the entire scale, <laughs> he mixes it up. He goes. Ah. He skips the F and goes straight to the E. So he, if it were the pattern, it would be. Doesn't do that. He does B, A, G, E. So. Um, debating whether I really have to go through the frets <laughs> and I don't see any comments from anyone saying they need it so but we can do it so this is gonna be over the five chord so down on the um and that's down up down up down up down up down up down And, and as we do that, I notice he did skip a degree. Like if it, I was pointing out, he met, he changed the pattern up when he didn't hit that F, um, but he actually skipped the piece. He started on the th three, and then he went to the two. In the pattern, it would have been going, starting from the C, the one, but he started from the seven. So I guess he really only did the pattern twice and then kind of just moved on to moved on to a feeling of major pentatonic in the G chord. Da, three, two, one, six. Okay, so let's go down on the open E, up on the D, third fret, second string, down on the C, second string, first fret, up on the second string, B. And then we'll go down on the D, the second string, fifth fret, at third fret, up on the C, first fret, second string, down on the open B, second string, and then up on the A, third string, second fret, and then we're going to go down on the open B, second string, up on the A, third fret, third string, second fret, down on the open G third string and then up on the E second fret fourth string okay it's fun right okay the next thing is straight into a C leg ending on we're gonna go down on the open G third string and then we're gonna do that customary upstroke on the flat three um, pull off to two the E flat to D the first fret fourth string upstroke goes down stroke as we pull off to the open D fourth string and then he does an upstroke on the seven here this second fret uh, fifth string B and then hits that C, the root, and then that up on that high C again, second uh, string, first fret. And then a nice good old C bass run. So that's going to be an upstroke on our low E, down on our first fret. Um, Sixth string, up on the G, third fret, sixth string, and then down on the open A, fifth string, up on the B, second fret, fifth string, and then down on our C, our third fret, fifth string. Um, I hope I didn't move too quickly. I try to go very slowly. And um, I'm, I'm. Hey there, Billy Bob Wolf. Good to see you. Good to see you. Dixie Hagen. Thanks for joining. 
Um, I just love this solo. I'm going to play it again for y'all. Um, let's do it at a slow tempo for y'all to play along with when you're practicing. When you listen to this recording, um, Norman Blake is playing rhythm guitar at the same time, which makes it really hard for um, somebody who's not used to transcribing solos to hear exactly what Tony's doing, because you'll hear other guitar notes going on at the same time. Um, so what I taught you is to the best of what I could you know, pull out for what I thought Tony was actually playing. Um, and that is kind of tricky on this record, the duet record, duet guitar record. So beautiful, though. It's such an awesome record. Um, and then secondly, I am concerned that for the intro that I um, taught you something a little too straight for the pickup as I was just playing it just now. Um, yeah, he has an anticipation, which I believe I just told you something straight. One and two and three. Either way, I just want to at least get that in this lesson before I press stop for whoever makes, makes it all, all the way through. Uh, BJ Rhodes, it looks like you made it all the, all the way through, which is great. Um, and yeah, and regarding digesting all of it, as BJ points out, these solos can take months and months and months to digest. So me just being here for an hour, I'm not expecting anyone to have walked away and just play the solo. I totally get that because I do teach and I see that um, it, it just takes longer than we all think. We just, if this isn't fun, that don't do it because I think it's fun. For me, it's fun trying to digest and try to like take little chunks and just go a little bit by bit. So just try to enjoy the process and, and if you get frustrated, I'm sure there's tons of other resources besides me. I tend to lead more toward, lead, lean more towards the ear training rather than the um, looking at a piece of paper because I want my students to be seeing triad shapes. And I've seen people, as I've taught them, go from learning from paper, feeling like addicted to that paper, and um, to being able to digest phrasing and ear training and learning a solo in this way. Um, of course, they have me coaching them and helping them at each little step. So, thank you so much, Alan. It's wonderful to see you again. I've missed you and I've thought about you um, the past few times I've been on here. So, I, I've told everybody I'm doing this eight weeks in a row. So, I'm not doing April 12th, which is a Wednesday. I'm going to do either Tuesday or Thursday that week because uh, I have a commitment on that Wednesday. But I'm trying to stick with Wednesdays at 7.30. So, um, so let's look before I say goodbye on this one because this, this will be recorded and eventually I'll post it on YouTube which will be easier to find. Um, 
It's the, uh, say, one and two and. So I don't think we did an anticipated thing at the beginning, and maybe I could just be doubting myself. But I'm going to go down on my C, my first uh, fret, second string. Down, up, goes down, up on the C. So C, G up, goes down, up on the C. That's the little movement for that syncopated pickup. So down, up, goes up, down on the G, up on the A, down on the C. And then an up on the G to end that little pickup run. Down, up, goes down, up, up, down, up, goes down, up, down, up, down, up, C, G, C, G, A, C, G. Straight into that slide, that half note slide. So there's your intro, revisited. Um, weirdly find that some of those little simple things in, with Tony are what confuses people the most. A fancy run is, is easier to hear, like that walking run, what I call that waterfall lick, a little easier to hear and take in. Sometimes when he does syncopated notes or repeated notes, like it's a lot of the same stuff, it's harder for people to internalize and hear. And I'm only saying that because if you find yourself getting frustrated, it's probably because you missed one random note that was in there, one open G, or one of, you know, one of the A's, or one of the, does a lot of repeating the same stuff. So, um, so stick with the patience, stick with the self-love, stick, stick with keeping it fun for yourself, and um, reach out to me if you have any questions, happy to help, and uh, we'll see you guys next Wednesday at 7.30. Um, we will probably do How Mountain Girls Can Love, or um, I'm Coming Back, but I don't know when. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I will do a post and a Facebook invite, and we will get together live again and have a great time. It's so wonderful to see all of you. Thank you so very much. Have a good week.